Hey everybody, we've got another housing market update today. It's JJ, you're watching Bull, Boom, Bear, Bust. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Home prices decline year over year in the New York City area. We're going to talk about which boroughs are seeing the biggest price drops. Also, rents drop year over year in San Francisco Bay Area. And nationwide, when you count all the data across the country, home prices are still up year over year. But home prices have slowed their pace uh, significantly. We're going to talk about what type of year-over-year -year price increases we're looking at now and where things may be headed in the housing market for both home prices and in the rental market. Quite a bit of information to touch on today. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, real quick, I'd like to thank you to everyone that tunes in. And we really appreciate you getting us to uh, right about 57,000 now. Um, the proportion of views versus uh, subscribers is pretty low though. As you see, we're doing pretty good on views for most of our videos, but subscribers, that's pretty low considering the amount of views that we get. So I ask you to please subscribe if you haven't done it already. I want to mention this because there's been a few reports of people getting unsubscribed. Glitches happen, of course. So thank you very much and let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started right here. Reuters article, U.S. home sales hit nine and a half year low. We've talked about that here many times. Ultra low inventory right now with many sellers holding off on listing their homes. Actually, many sellers had their home on the market. They pulled it back off the market because of the pandemic, because of the virus scare. And again, many sellers are waiting for this V-shaped recovery to ensure that they get top dollar for their home. So a lot of these sellers are waiting for that V-shaped recovery, waiting for the market to get even stronger, even though the prices really haven't dipped that much for the homes that have been sold, except for a couple areas, which we're gonna talk about. And I'm sure most of you might know by now, the housing market, the economy overall is in freeze mode because of all the assistance the government's been pushing out there because of the moratoriums, uh, the frozen evictions, uh, government-backed loans don't have to be paid right now and the mortgages. Uh, but even with all of that delay and assistance to homeowners and renters, we're still seeing some weakness in the prices. And let's talk about the year-over-year -year numbers here nationwide. And let's go down into the article a little bit deeper here. And these are resales, also known as existing homes. Now, they make up about 90% of all U.S. home sales. And let's scroll down a little bit further in this article right here. The median existing home price rose 2.3% from a year ago, and it's about $284,600 now. These are the main numbers. We probably will not see the June numbers until early July, so we'll be here to give you the update on that, but 2.3% is pretty low. When you compare that to the gains that people have been seeing in the stock market and even in precious metals, that is a super low year-over-year -year increase or year-over-year -year return. Right? I use the word return loosely because it's not a return unless you sell your home and you actually get that. The thing about it is if everybody does sell their home, everybody that wants to sell, well, the price is going to start dropping because then you're going to see higher inventory and that's going to change that balance from the supply and the demand. Okay, so many people by now expect that home prices to be dropping, but remember we've got the freezes, we've got the moratoriums in place, all of the different assistance that's happening with the unemployment, the extra unemployment benefits. Uh, the stimulus, uh, people getting assistance with their utilities. So a lot of people are staying put and without all of that assistance you might see many, many uh, millions of homes being either one foreclosed or two being put on the market for sale. And when you have that many homes hitting the market at the same time you're going to see definitely definitely see a significant price movement downward. But for now uh, it's not surprising that we're seeing you know this small year over year increase still. Now let's talk about the exceptions here. This is going to be New York City. We're going to focus on a couple of boroughs today. It's going to be Brooklyn and Manhattan. And this is out of Globe ST, GlobeStreet.com, it looks like. The biggest drop in 10 years. Brooklyn home prices dropped 2.7% year over year. Right? Not a big drop, but just the fact that they've dropped is uh, news in today's economy where everything else is frozen. And this is the canary in the coal mine, in my opinion. And we've talked about this before on our previous housing videos, that it is the big cities that usually lead the way in the price declines. And especially now with so many more people looking to get out of the city, and there's a couple different aspects of this. 
One is when the economy's strong and there's a lot of jobs, most of those jobs, and it's probably no surprise to any of you, most of those jobs are concentrated in the metropolitan areas. That's where the people are. That's where the people are swiping the credit cards. That's where a lot of the corporate offices are and all the different jobs that pop up, you know, from a big city environment. But when the downturn happens, then the places with the most jobs see the most job losses. Of course, because that's where most of the jobs are. So when the economy takes a turn, you're going to see the most job losses in those areas. Right? Also, there's a lot more speculation in metropolitan areas and big cities for real estate. A lot more competition with buying a home because so many more people work in the area and they're bidding up home prices. So would not surprise me to see more price declines even during the foreclosure moratorium period. So Brooklyn down 2.7%. Let's talk about Manhattan. Manhattan is seeing prices down as much as 15%. 15% year over year. That's not just a month to month number. So it's pretty significant. Let's take a look at some more numbers here. Now first let's look at the home price prior to the outbreak. So we're talking before mid-March. It was 1,120,000 or 1.12 million. Since the outbreak, as of May, we've got 960,000. That's over a $50,000 price drop. So you have another example here of exaggerated price movement because of cities losing the most jobs. When the economy's booming, the jobs are booming. When the economy goes bust, the cities take the brunt of the bust. And add on top of that, all of this civil unrest, we know that self-defense units have skyrocketed. People are moving from the city to the suburbs and many people from the suburbs out to the country. People see what's happening with the breakdown of society. And if you've been watching this channel, you know it's likely to get much, much worse. There's not many solutions out there being implemented. A lot more debt and a lot more stimulus out of the central bank, but really nothing that's going to change the long-term trajectory of this economy and of the working class's financial situation. So I continue to say, prepare, prepare, prepare. Now let's go ahead and talk about what's happening with rents in San Francisco. Also real quick, back to New York. I forgot about the CNBC article right here. And this breaks down how sales have really dropped off a cliff, the lowest in 30 years. That is a plunge. And that median home price decline that we talked about earlier in Manhattan uh, equates to an 18% drop year over year. That is a big price drop, 18%. All right, now to San Francisco. ABC7 News, abc7news.com. San Francisco sees record-breaking drop in rents amid pandemic, according to Zumper. Now, rents are important to look at because it's not as easier for someone to live off of credit and pay their rent. Sure, they can for a while. They can take out cash advances, but most landlords aren't accepting credit cards. And most people aren't taking out loans to pay their rent. So it is a true picture of the economy in a given area. And we know San Francisco, a lot of jobs there, also a lot of job losses now that the economy is taking a nosedive. Scrolling down right here, the average cost of renting a one-bedroom apartment in San Francisco was 11.8% lower in June compared to the same month last year. So it's a year-over-year -year price decline. That's big news. That is the largest year-over-year -year drop the city's ever seen. Huh, interesting, just like we said. So the bigger cities are going to see the brunt of the decline. We expect when the foreclosures are allowed to happen, we're going to see big price drops, especially in the large cities, the metropolitan areas, and even more so now with all the things happening socially. Now, I should add to this, other Bay Area cities uh, were down pretty significantly as well. 15% drop in Mountain View, 13.5% uh, in Menlo Park and almost 16% in Cupertino. People getting out of the city. The CEO here of Zumper, I'll try to get his name right here, Anthemos Georgiadas uh, says here, results are remarkable, especially in the Bay Area. And he follows it up here. Talk to anyone in the Bay Area, this is real. I took my kiddo up for a walk to the beach this weekend. We must have seen half a dozen U-Hauls. Buildings have been reported one-fourth empty. Now let's go down to this other tweet here. This is still the Zumper CEO. And he talks about a couple things that we talked about on this channel here. One is he said enormous recession brought on by the uh, by the virus. Now I think I should add to that the recession was escalated by the virus, but the recession was already on the way when you look at the debt levels, the rising defaults, 
all of the propping up of the economy, the bank stimulus, the bailouts, you name it. But he also goes on to say here something that I don't think many people are talking about. Um, the move to remote work for tech employees, that's a big, big thing, of course, in San Francisco, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. And a lot of people were sent home because of the virus. But I think companies are going to start seeing that things are a lot safer, one, and two, more cost efficient, cost effective with having employees at home. And there's some companies here in California that do it. My company is one of them. We're working remote. Thank goodness. I love it. Um, there's actually a, um, an insurance company that's hiring right now remote workers. They're called Hartford or the Hartford, Hartford Insurance Group. They're hiring. I just saw a, uh, a ad for them. If you're into uh, looking for a job and want to work from home, maybe check that out. And many, many more companies are going to be doing the remote worker thing. So a lot of dominoes falling in the cities for uh, many different reasons. And it's going to be interesting to see how it affects the suburbs. You're likely going to see stronger demand in the suburbs. Maybe we won't see prices drop in the suburbs. Or maybe it'll be such a broad economic uh, downturn once things are finally allowed to function normally, if that ever is going to happen. But eventually we may see prices drop no matter what, even in the suburbs, even with the extra demand in the suburbs, because so many people are losing their jobs and many of these people are not going to get their jobs back. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. Thanks for watching this report. Please pound that like button if you like what we talk about. Come back for more. Hit that subscribe button, please, if you haven't done it. Hope to see you all again here soon. And happy 4th to everyone if I don't see you before then. But I'll try to get another report out tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.